Are you wondering how to get through a divorce without having to pay too much in alimony or just wondering how much might you be on the hook for if, in case of divorce? I've got some answers for you. My name is Zachary C. Ashby, Pacific Northwest Family Law, I'm here to answer the question, how much do I have to pay for alimony? Now in Washington state, the word we use for alimony is called spousal maintenance. Spousal maintenance is a little less gendered because the husband or the wife could be obligated to pay spousal maintenance. The intent of maintenance is to maintain someone. It isn't to compensate them for the marriage or time spent, but it's to help them maintain a certain lifestyle until they're able to obtain training. Now, as opposed to other states, there is not a formula that the state uses or that the courts use to determine how much alimony you have to pay. So it can be challenging for parties going through it to see what really is fair. There are several factors the judge will look at. If a judge has to make the determination, an attorney can advise you on what would be reasonable. But what that means is because it's multi-factored, so you're going to have a range of what's reasonable and what's not. Some of the major factors are how much income does each spouse earn. Now, if both spouses earn about the same, there's not going to be very much spousal maintenance. If you both earn about the same, there's no spousal support. Don't pay it. Don't agree to pay it. Again, it's not to compensate someone for ending the marriage. Now, there might be circumstances where you agree to a little bit to get things over with. Know that if you do that, it's not because of any kind of legal obligation. But a more traditional marriage where one spouse is the primary bread earner and one spouse is more of a stay-at-home parent or otherwise is at home keeping care of the house and not in a career, you're going to see some spousal maintenance considerations. If one spouse has gone through school, is a high income earner and the other spouse isn't, there's a disparity in the income, that's when you start to enter into spousal maintenance territory. The other factor is how long were you married? Short-term marriages of five years or less, if there is going to be a spousal maintenance, it's not going to be for very long, and it probably won't be for the length of the marriage. So you're looking at one, two, maybe three years of the spousal maintenance. You can ask for more, you can agree to more, but probably isn't going to be ordered in a court barring other factors. If you have a long-term marriage, you're going to have a longer duration for spousal maintenance. The length of the marriage determines not how much you pay, but how long you are paying. Some of the other factors are going to be health and age of the spouses. The older you are, the more likely that spousal is going to be ordered or that it's going to be cut off depending on retirement and social security expectations. If you're younger, it might be shorter because you're able to enter the work field. If you're healthy, you're going to be expected to go to work, get some training. If you're sick or disabled, there might be a greater need for some spousal support. So those are all different factors. The other factor is what are the financial needs of each party? These can be factors like what's the debt load that one spouse is taking on versus the other, are there children involved? Even if child support isn't a factor because they're not yours, one spouse might have a greater need because they have children from a prior marriage. So there are circumstances where that's going to be a factor. Are there special health considerations where one spouse has a higher ongoing need because of prescriptions or treatment or therapy that increases their, their needs? To sum it up, what you're looking at is the ability to pay of the spouse who is going to pay and the financial need of the spouse who is asking for spousal. The court can often equalize the income in both households. Usually it will be until the other spouse can get work or get the training so they can each be completely separate and there's no longer a payment. Bottom line is I can't answer how much. It's going to depend on the factors in your individual case, but we'd be happy to help you figure that out and work through that. If you have any comments or questions, you can comment below. You can send email to info at pnwfamilylaw.com or you can call us at 509-866-4111. Thank you.